yeah so basically it's a wave that is caused as a longitudinal wave so there is a compression and there's a rare fraction so one way of looking at a longitudinal wave is if you look at waves on a spring that if you keep on pulling or pushing on the spring then you will see some rare fraction and compression so over here as the diagram shows what's happening is that when the spring is close to close together you're getting a compression and when they're further apart that's a rare fraction and what happens is that the wave goes from the fixed end towards the other and it keeps on moving okay no wait a minute there is a fixed end and the guy is holding on onto the other side so it's pull, pushing and pulling and that is causing the wave to go from his right hand towards the left hand and that is how the wave is transmitted obviously there is some energy but we remember if you remember we said that wave is transfer of energy without transfer of medium but over here we can clearly see that spring is moving closer or further away so spring is clearly moving so why is it that the this is still a wave why is it that we still say that there is no transfer of medium and the idea here is that if there is a portion of the spring that is going to the left then the same portion is going to come back towards the right and there is overall zero movement so because there is zero net movement we say that this is wave so energy just transmitted from one side to another but this is still a wave sound is exactly like this sound is basically a longitudinal wave just like this one there are compressions and rare fraction there are places where air is being stretched and there are places where air is squashed together and that is how you get this so if you look at a spring or sorry a speaker then speakers usually have a paper cone at the end so they're usually designed like this and this paper cone pushes forward and pulls back pushing and pulling the air making it squished and making it like further away and that is how it does transmit this um, energy in the air so air particles are going close coming close together or they're going further away and that is how sound is created and sound is generated and sound is transmitted through the air if you don't have any particles then this is impossible to do because what will you squish together if you don't have particles that is why sound needs a medium sure if particles are close together it will travel faster which is why sound is fastest in solids and if there are particles that are not like further away if the density of the thing is low then sound will be like transmitted slowly but in both cases you will see that sound is uh, transmitting so for example if you look at this table then you can easily compare how sound works so for example sound is traveling at a speed of 330 meter per second in air but almost 1400 in water which is almost five times and then concrete is much much higher and in steel it's even higher and it all has to do with the density of the thing how close the particles are how they're colliding with each other okay and how they're transmitting this uh, energy okay so it all has to do with that all right so if you notice how do we know that sound is like that so what they did was they tried to photograph some dust particles and this is the picture that they got so the green particles are supposed to be dust particles evenly distributed and there's a paper cone that's on the left side so when the loudspeaker gives a sound the particles are distributed like that and if you notice you can clearly see that they are coming close together here in the compression over over here or over here and this is where the far part for the support of the rear fraction the distance between any consecutive compression or any consecutive rear fraction is basically uh wavelength all right so that's the lambda that you have okay so theek hai yahan tak baat clear hai how do we measure the speed that we have here matlab kaise hame kaise pata hai uske liye you have to understand that there are two ways of looking at it so for example if i had a speaker cone here and i'm standing here or there is a mic here so there is a mic and we are measuring or we are recording the sound that we're getting so from here to here the distance we need to know for sure and then we can easily figure out 
when did we turn the switch on for the loudspeaker and when did the mic first get its input so that will be the time so that will give me the distance divided by time and that will be the speed of sound but sometimes it's very difficult to measure speed of sound especially if the distances are small like you can't do it in a room because the speed is so fast that the error is huge so what we try to do is we go into the open ground or we we use large distances and when you have large distances it's hard to have a sync in ke loudspeaker kab on hua tha aur mic ne kab cheezon ko suna tha so what we do instead is we use the idea of echo echo is when sound comes back after striking some surface so basically sound because it's a wave and like all waves this one is also reflected from surfaces so when sound is reflected from surfaces we call that echo okay so what we do is we take the input from the echo we like okay we are going definitely going to get an echo somewhere and then based on where we are we obviously select a position a location that allows us to get some echo and what we do is we are like okay let's suppose there is a cliff here and this cliff does give an echo and there is a person sitting here and that person is going to let's suppose clap or something and they also have a mic or a timer or whatever so the sound goes all the way here comes back and when they hear it back they are like okay this is when i know so they start the stopwatch the moment they speak and they stop the stopwatch when they have uh, heard an echo okay so how much distance had the light really uh, the sound really traveled it is this distance that it has gone once and then come back so that is two times the distance so in this case for echo so when you're using echo the speed is going to be two distance divided by the time taken for the whole distance the distance the time between producing the wave and recording the echo okay so that is how you use the idea of distance divided by time to find speed obviously we are assuming that sound has an fixed or constant velocity here uh, that might not be true on a humid day it will be different because density of air is different so hum average out kar lete hain aur hum ek average se value nikal lete hain ki acha ji ye 330 hai similarly steel ki bahut sari differences hongi density wagaira mein to wo hum usko dekh lete hain the second idea to remember is limit of audibility like every creature has some sensor okay so we have ears that have ear drums and those ear drums obviously absorb these uh waves that we get okay and it can be uh sensed so wo jo ear drum hai usko bhi vibrate karna hoga so that the signal is transmitted to the brain so if the wavelength is too small or if the frequency is too small for it to actually vibrate the ear drum to such an extent ki wo signal generate kare ya na kare then we wouldn't be able to hear the sound similarly if the it the if the sound is too loud and the ear drum will not be able to vibrate that much per second then obviously we wouldn't be able to hear that sound so that we call limit of audibility that there is a limit to how much our ear drum can sense things uh when you're young ear drum is more sensitive as you get older it varies theek hai usually people i have seen them complain ke teenagers baat nahi sunte so i think that has something to do with it as well so the idea here is that there is a limit to audibility and we measure the frequency between 20 hertz and 20000 hertz and that is the limit of human audible range okay so 20 hertz and 20000 hertz so i've tested it personally that i heard that dogs have a greater audible range than humans so i bought a speaker that was able to produce sounds that was beyond human uh, hearing capability or audible range and i did run some sounds on that and my dogs were totally confused and that is how i know ki kaam karta hai and works yeah but then you don't have to like do this experiment and confuse your dogs uh you can simply look it up bats for example they have ultrasonic audible ranges what that means is that any wave that has 
a wavelength, a sound wave that has a wavelength greater than this one, that's called ultrasonic. Okay. So, वो यहाँ से उसको पता लग जाता है. अब obviously it depends कि आप किसकी बात करें. If you're talking about frequency, then ultrasonic frequencies are frequencies that are greater than twenty thousand hertz. If you're talking about ultrasonic speed, then they that means the speed that is greater than the speed of air. uh sound in air so sound ki speed at 330 so greater than speed of sound speeds that are greater than 330 a little unrelated there's another unit that's called mac so 1 mac is basically 330 meter per second uh that's the speed so when you look at fighter jets for example or any jet engine we usually try to see that all right what is the mac number for this uh speed so for example if you look at a jet and it's like they say okay this is mach 3 so mach 3 would mean that this is going to go at a speed that is three times the speed of air obviously it's not entirely based on that there is a whole uh like if you study fluid dynamics usme aap ek cheez padhoge flow velocity that how is a fluid flowing और फ्लो वेलोसिटी के साथ वो मैक रिलेट करता है सो इट्स रियली सिंपल हाउ फास्ट इज द मीडियम फ्लोइंग एंड हाउ इज द स्पीड ऑफ लाइट स्पीड ऑफ साउंड इन दैट मीडियम तो उससे हमें मैक नंबर वगैरह मिल जाता है सो दैट इज यूजफुल बिकॉज यू माइट हैव सीन दिस कोन फॉर एग्जांपल दिस इज एन एफ 18 एंड इट्स क्रिएटिंग दिस कोन इन द एयर सो दैट इज बेसिकली दैट the sound wave that it has generated that is at ultrasonic speed and that sound wave has like changed the flow of air to some extent so ye uski koi ye exactly mac 1 ki speed pe uski picture unhone li hui hai theek hai after it does that the cone actually changes its shape and if 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 the if it is traveling at speed that is much greater than speed of साउंड तो आपको उसकी बड़ी गरज चमक और चमक तो नहीं गरज की आवाज आएगी ठीक है यू कैन डेफिनेटली गो टू यूट्यूब एंड यू कैन लिसन टू अल्ट्रासोनिक स्पीड इसको हम कहते हैं सोनिक बूम सो सोनिक बूम इज बेसिकली व्हेन दिस हैपेंस एट व्हेन समथिंग ट्रैवल्स एट स्पीड दैट इज ग्रेटर देन द स्पीड ऑफ साउंड तो उससे हमें क्या मतलब होता है तो दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो लेट मी सी इफ आई कैन शेयर इट विद यू गाइस ओके आई जस्ट सेंड यू द लिंक यू कैन वॉच इट और राइट सो एक तो ये हो गया व्हेन थिंग्स आर ट्रैवलिंग लाइक दैट अगली बात है कि हाउ डू वी आर देयर एनी क्वालिटीज ऑफ वेव और साउंड वेव दैट वी नीड टू नो अबाउट एंड आल्सो कैन वी यूज समथिंग लाइक दिस टू एक्चुअली मेजर द स्पीड ऑफ साउंड सो या यू कैन सो फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू लुक एट an aeroplane and you're sure that it's traveling at mach 1 or you bilkul usko karne laga and all that so the moment you get you see that happen and you start the stopwatch and when you actually hear it you stop the stop the stopwatch and that is the time it has taken for the sound to go from the aeroplane to you obviously you need to know how high the aeroplane was traveling so some context in air force would help but other than that you can also think about uh clouds so when there on a rainy day there is usually a lightning strike or something because there is an accumulation of charge we will study that when we study electrostatics to hota kya hai ki wahan se lightning strike ho jati hai wo lightning strike jo hai wo aapko nazar pehle aayegi you will hear it later and that is because uh sound travels much much slower compared to light so the moment you see it that will be almost instantaneous बिकॉज इट्स स्टिल इन द एटमोसफेयर एटमोसफेयर हमारा बहुत छोटा सा है सो फॉर लाइट द ट्रेवल टाइम इज रियली रियली स्मॉल सो यू कैन जस्ट टेक दैट और जैसे आपको नजर आएगी यू स्टार्ट द स्टॉप वॉच एंड द मोमेंट यू हियर इट यू स्टॉप द स्टॉप स्टॉप वॉच एंड दैट इज हाउ यू नो हाउ मच टाइम इट टॉप ऑब्वियसली हाउ फार द क्लाउड आर इट वेरीज वॉट काइंड ऑफ अ डे यू आर हैविंग बट देर आर इजी वे ऑफ मेजरिंग द distance or you can just take the average value of how high a certain kind of cloud is and you can take that theek hai to usse aap calculate kar sakte hain speed of 
sound. Obviously, this is not an echo method. So you use the speed is just for time idea. All right. The third thing that we need to know about sound is when we are qualitatively describing a sound. Okay. So Ma Adina has shared a very interesting thing that when you uh, see lightning and you measure five seconds and then you hear thunder, that means lightning struck one mile away from where you are standing. So why is that important? Because this idea that five seconds ka matlab hai ek mile and the number of seconds it takes, us pe depend karta hai ki how many miles so hum ye keh rahe hain ki hame light ki speed ka pata hai theek hai so if agar hame pata hai light ki speed sa and let's say it is 330 so 330 times 5 is 1650 meters and that is almost exactly how many kilometers uh, how many meters there are in a mile because in one mile you have 1609 meters okay so at an average speed of 300 that's a very fair idea or ye aapko acha khasa bahut acha estimate de deta hai that if it takes light sound to come in 5 seconds then it's almost very close to a mile away so yeah this is true and the idea is really simple if you know the speed and you measure the time you multiply speed with time you get the distance so for 1 mile at a speed of 300 it will take almost 5 seconds so yeah that's good but why you still using miles are you american okay so qualitatively describing sounds so usme there are three terms that are important whenever you describe a sound those are uh pitch loudness or ek aur tha quality jisko hum timbre kehte hain okay so loudness is easily measurable okay so loudness relates to the amplitude of the wave so sound is a wave the higher the amplitude higher the loudness so higher the loudness of the wave okay so you can take the same note and you can give it more energy and the higher energy it delivers to whatever whoever is hearing it so it could be a mic it could be our ears the higher the energy that they de deliver then per unit time of course the higher the loudness theek hai kyunki zyada energy use kar rahe uh pitch is basically related to frequency and it's again really easy to figure this out that which is higher frequency sounds sound more shrill because you're getting more and more waves per unit second so that is they have a higher pitch and lower frequency sound they have a lower pitch i i'm not sure if this is true but there was this episode of big bang theory in which they said that uh women their ears have been attuned to hearing higher frequency sounds more uh because they are like their that is the like a baby crying has a higher frequency so uski wajah se they are more attuned to hearing that similarly men they hear low frequency sounds more because they are kind of uh like thodi si wo itni shrill nahi hoti hain heavy sounds hoti hain and that has to do with the male have had this idea uh, this role traditional role of uh providing security so if somebody is sneaking up on you if you're in a jungle or koi sher ji ta aa raha hai so that will obviously having the ability to hear lower registers would help yeah we're going theory is a good show yeah so that is i'm not sure if this is true or not and uh, yeah so just a theory and then we have the timbre or quality of sound quality is basically the shape of the wave that you get so same shape same wave can be produced through different uh, different uh kya use kehte hain different instruments and the thing is that every instrument has this uh, fundamental frequency every sound producing thing has a fundamental frequency theek hai and that fundamental frequency is always mixed with some other frequencies jinko hum kehte hain overtones so whenever you produce a sound and you produce that sound from the same instrument you are going to get the same similar similar sound because usko overtones bhi usi tarah ke honge uski fundamental frequency bhi same hai but the moment you change that the moment you change the instrument you are going to get a different wave form kyunki uski 
जो फंडामेंटल फ्रीक्वेंसी है वो चेंज हो सकती है आप ओवर टोन से चेंज कर सकते हो फंडामेंटल फ्रीक्वेंसी चेंज नहीं कर सकते हो एंड दैट इज रियली इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज द सेम साउंड कमिंग फ्रॉम फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्रम्पेट विल बी वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अ पियानो और a flute or somebody singing the same sound or humming the same sound it will be very different because all of these sources they have their individual fundamental frequencies uh, we use this fundamental frequency all the time so for example aapne suna hoga ki ji wo itna acha singer tha legendary singer tha ki unhone uh, pata nahi glass tod diya gaane ga ke so what they're doing is that they're producing waves at such fun, such high overtones कि उनकी फ्रीक्वेंसी से वो ग्लास जो है वो वाइब्रेट किया और वो बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सका और ब्रेक डाउन हो गया ओके सो दैट इज प्रॉबली द आइडिया है